Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'm going to show you how I made this card. I don't have a name for it, um, I haven't seen anybody else use this technique but I dare say they have. Um, so I'm just leaving it unnamed for the time being. I'm going to change my colour scheme for today and I am going to be using uh, flirty flamingo and I'm going to start off by telling you the card pieces that you need. So the card base measures eight and a quarter inches by five and three quarter inches scored and folded at four and one eighth inches which is 21 by 14.5 centimeters scored and folded at 10.5 centimeters and then for the uh, flirty flamingo two pieces and they should measure three and seven eighths inches by five and a half inches which is 10 by 14 centimeters and then two pieces of whisper white which measure three and three quarter inches by five and three eighths inches which is 9.7 by 13.7 centimeters and you need a uh, scrap for your flowers um, what I did with this one is I stamped this on the inside. On this card I am doing five flowers and I'm going to adhere one of the die cut ones in here. The only reason I'm doing that is because um, I can position my flower whichever way I want it. Um, I can look at it, decide whether I like it like that, twist it, whatever. I'm not happy with the flower in that position. Um, so I thought well, I'll do five. I've already done four of them and fussy cut them so I'm going to be able to do I'm going to stamp one, colour one, fussy cut one so you don't have to watch me do all of these. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do my dry embossing. The other change that I'm making with this card is where I've got the main colour as the top layer and the same as the base, the top colour on this one's going to be white with a white card base. Okay, I just wanted to see what they look like if they, the colours got alternated. At first I was going to do this one in Coastal Cabana but then I thought no, at least it gives us a chance to see another colour as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the big shot up so that I can do some dry embossing which isn't a very good name for it because I'm going to use one of our uh, dynamic embossing folders I'm using the um, hexagons and it is recommended that you spray your cardstock with um, some water before you do it because this is a dynamic and it is really very very thick Okay, you can see how thick that one is. Um, and by spraying your card with some water, it helps the uh, fibres stretch without tearing. I'm using just plain water for mine. I have heard some people use um, uh, rubbing alcohol because it dries that much quicker. But there's such a small amount that goes on this, I really don't see that that's a problem. Um, obviously I can't show you sp me spraying this but you'll hear too okay so I'll take my word that I'm doing this oh missed it would help if I had the uh, nozzle facing the right direction and I've probably overdone that quite a bit you can see yes you can look at it masses of water on there fortunately the temperature here is absolutely gorgeous still it's been going on for weeks now and um, so it's not going to take very long for that to dry right so which is the front I never know with the design let's see I've got a little bit cut off over there haven't I um, which is the front and the back of the embossing here because they both look really good um, you see that one and you see that one, that one's like debossed if you like but it still looks very very 3D I prefer that one I think what did I use? 
yes I used that one um, but we'll see I'm going to pay attention this time to find out what is the right one and the way I'm doing that is because this is the front of the folder where you got Sizzix and stamping up so I'm just going to put that in and make sure I get it lined up straight just hold that up to the light and the other thing I recommend that you do again I didn't pay attention to this but I think I was quite lucky is to try and get your pattern level going across the top so that when you're cutting it off I mean if you cover up with your flowers like that it doesn't matter but if you want to try and get both sides looking the same like that then you should try and get this leveled um, as I say I didn't pay any attention to that when I did that card but I think that looks about right just trying to see it in the light the thing is with this one it will notice if it's not straight like that let's try that again I don't know whether you can hear but I have my ceiling fan on again but I've got it on <laughs> maximum speed I think that looks all right okay now what we need for um, using one of these dynamic emboss fold embossing folders is we need the normal big shot platform which is that one but without the thin die adapter and then we need to put our embossing folder in with the fold going in first and then we need one cutting mat now I haven't given you a um, sizing for this paper so that you can cut it and that's going to be the right size as you put it onto your next layer you are going to have to cut some top off there and the reason I've decided to do it like that is because if you decide you want to use a different sentiment or you want to leave a bigger gap or a smaller gap then what I am showing you is going to work fine for that um, for my card here I've used quite a thin um, sentiment like that and if you decided to use a that sentiment but you didn't want so much gap top and bottom then the way we're doing it is quite easy for you to close that up without worrying about the size of your um, cardstock and I'll show you what I mean with that that probably sounds all gobbledygook but it'll be fine okay so, oh now I didn't pay attention to which way it came out um, but anyway I'm sure that's the right side um, so that's going to be going on to that I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that to dry because I was a bit over generous with the spray and I'm going to do the one flower that I need that I'm missing and for that I'm going to use stays on my flower is from Botanical Bliss it's this one here and I'm going to be colouring it using watercolour pencils now in August 2018 next month there's going to be a limited edition stamp set on offer from Stamping Up it's got some this is a stamp set okay so it's Christmas and um, what Americans would call fall um, and also any time of year really because it's got that beautiful flower stamp in it um, and it's got some um, sentiments that could suit, suit any occasion but there's also the Christmas one down here so it'll be these two stamp sets fabulous set of dies that will go with it and that's these okay so there's a bow that's for a bell um, flowers with leaves a leaf and leaves there and I imagine that's meant to be um, mistletoe and two little scrolls but these 
dies here, they're stitched frames, but they've got stitches inside and out, so positive and negative. So when you die cut that one, for example, and you can see the stitches around it, you also get the stitches around the outside there. It looks absolutely stunning. And you've got three sizes. That's the bow. That's the um, bell. Let me just show you that because that looks like nothing on earth. Okay, so that's the bell for that one. And then you've got the sprigs and the leaves. Um, that's the only one that's got a stamp for it. But look at that bow. I think that's absolutely gorgeous. So there's that. Now why am I telling you all of this? Because there will also be on offer. Okay, this is going to be, it's called Colour Your Season. But also available is going to be these uh, watercolour pencils, which are new colours. Okay, and I'm going to be using two of these. That was the reason I told you all about that. But also to give you a heads up that there will be that um, limited edition coming on offer in August. Right, these are my regular colours. I've got more than the normal amount in there because I've got doubles of three colours there. But these are the new ones that will be on offer and there's a very strong possibility they will become regular items. I'm not sure about that yet. Um, but these are the colours. Cherry Cobbler, Flirty Flamingo, which is what I'm using. Cajun Craze, Crushed Curry, Granny Apple Green, which I'm also using. Garden Green, Coastal Cabana, which is what I've used on this one. Balmy Blue, Night of Navy and Gorgeous Grape. So that really is building up a nice collection of colours for our watercolours. Right, let's get to it. Now I'm going to do my flower in stays on, as I say. But I'm only going to do one. Oh, might as well have got my pencils out while I was there, mightn't I? Um, that's the green and that's the flirty flamingo. And the yellow in the centre of my flower, that is from Daffodil Delight, which is from the original set. Right, so I'm going to start colouring the flower first and I'm going to colour everything inside the flower except that little bit there. In fact, let me do that little bit there first. Okay, so that's all yellow. That's the stamens and the pollen and everything. And then on the petals, should I bring you down a little bit closer? I know I tend to forget to um, put you back up again for a little while. But just so that I can give you an idea what this actually looks like. So what I do is I just very gently go all the way over the petals. As you see on here, I do the centre bit dark, but I start off by doing it all very, very gentle. And I don't worry too much about um, what directions my pencil's going in. The only thing I am very, very careful about is that I don't go over the edge. I used to take my granddaughter with me to my card making classes when I first started several years ago. And um, she was absolutely, totally fascinated with watercolour pencils, absolutely loved it. She was only about four or five at the time. Right, now what I'm using here, what the part of the pencil that I'm using here is a flat part of the lead, okay. see that. Now I'm going to turn it over to find a sharp bit and that is what I am going to be using. In fact it's more pointed actually and that is a bit that I'm going to be using, the bits that I want darker.
to do this bit you probably find that you need to just keep on turning the pencil so you keep getting a sharp part of the point Oops, I think I went over the line a bit there. Fortunately it was on to another part of the petal. Right, now that I've done that, on this one I'm doing slightly different. All of this and that bit there has all been done in the lighter, but on the flirty flamingo I'm doing this outside dark, darker rather, because I wanted to see what this looked like. And you'll be pleased to know that I was happy with the result. As I say, I've already done four of these flowers. There we go. And then just with the granny apple green, I am trying to find a sharp po point to do the leaves because I want them to be a nice rich green. You can feel when you've got, you're onto a flat soft bit as opposed to a nice sharp piece. Now to smooth all this over, I use our uh, blender pens, okay, get my scrap of paper. Because these have all been used before, I always make sure that I'm starting off with a clean pen. It looks as if I didn't put it away very clean there, okay. Right, so I am going to do the light pink first and I am just going over my colouring and what happens is the liquid inside the blender pen just smooths out the colouring so you don't see any of the lines of, that the pencil has made This is really such an easy way to do colouring. I hope you can see how this is all smoothing out really nicely. I don't want to rush it because I know that if I do, I'm going to start going over the edges. Did I do that one? I think I did, didn't I? Right, now I'm going to do the darker pieces. And for this, because I've got pink on there, it doesn't matter. I don't have to clean it before I do this next bit because it's pink also. came over a little bit there. So what I'm going to do, if I wipe that off a bit, I'm just going to go back over that. And that's made that disappear. Watercolour pencils are just so amazingly forgiving. As I say, the only thing I'm really very careful about is that I don't go over the edges, the outside edges. I 
started that one, didn't I? Okay, so before I do the yellow, I'm going to clean my blender pen. As I'm doing this, I'm actually turning the pen, if you watch that bit there, just use my thumb to scoot it around. So I'm going to do the yellow. Now we'll clean that a little bit, but I'm not going to worry too much because it's going on to green. So there we go, it's as easy as that. I'll just clean that before I put it away. I do normally remember. Right, okay. See, it doesn't make it perfectly even, but it does make it look nicely painted. Okay. I thought I could see a line there. Gone now. Right, so I am going to cut this one out. Now what I do is, for the ones I'm leaving the leaf leaves on, which is the ones at the bottom, and I'll be leaving the leaves on, on that one, I cut round and I leave a, a small white edge. And this is reasonably easy to fussy cut. For the ones, the flowers that I'm going to put on top, I cut right against the black line. And the reason I do that is because the flowers on the top, I cut off the leaves. Let me show you. See, the leaves have gone, but if I'd left a little gap around there, there would have been a little bit of green where the leaves were. Okay, so the whole lot comes off. It's just the flower that's left, if it's going to be a flower that's on the top. I'll have to show you the, card, the first card that I made that... Um, where I had this idea of doing a dry embossed sheet and then cutting it to use on a card front so that I could put a sentiment in between. Um, I wasn't particularly happy with it. Um, I think it finished up a bit too busy. But I thought I was really pleased with the idea of it and when I posted it to my blog earlier today I did say that I think I will be revisiting this and I, I had to get on and do it there and then. So there we go, there's that. So that one I think I will keep to put on the inside of my card. What I did was I took the, the one that's going to be on the bottom with the leaves and I curled it very slightly with a pencil and I curled that one very slightly. Then I've got a little dimensional on there. In fact, I told you I was going to forget to move you back up again. Let me just pop this on and then I will move the camera away a bit. And then I just make sure that I put this back on the same way. And that's the easiest bit to pay attention to because it's the one that's got more shape on that bit there. All right, so I just pop that on top. And the reason I do leave a little white edge on at least one piece is because it's so that it shows up when it goes on the colour. Okay, like that. You can see where the um, Coastal Cabana starts for the cardstock and where it starts for the flower as well. And that is going to apply to this, the flirty flamingo. 
Right, let me just move you back up again. Let's move that back and that gives me an idea how far to move you. Yep, that should be fine. Okay, so this bit now. Now I'm just going to copy what I've done here, which is one, two, three and a bit. Um, okay, this one. There's a bit there, so one, two, three. So I'm going to cut across there. I could go up one extra actually. Let's go up one extra. So I'm doing four and a bit. And all I did was I just cut on all the diagonal lines. And this is why I wasn't very happy with um, my first card because the embossing folder that I'd used was um, petal burst so the shapes were really very irregular um, and well I just wasn't that happy with it as I say I love the idea I don't know maybe it's just a tidy mind But you may like it much better than um, being as regimental as this one is. Okay, so let's just cut this off. I've done several of these fronts and cut them apart. I haven't made them all into cards, but on my blog tomorrow which will be the 17th of July I will show photographs of them so you can see what the results were there were lots that I didn't bother trying because I didn't think it would work anyway right okay so that's going to be going up like that right so what I did next was um, I'm going to get confused now because I'm going to keep thinking I'm doing white I'm going to adhere this one on here first And then once I've got this on, I'm going to stamp my sentiment. I'm going to use the same one again to a wonderful friend. I think that's a nice one. And it could suit several different occasions as well. Okay, so bow to adhere this on I'm just leaving a small gap there right another good reason about doing it this way not cutting this off yet is if I find that when I'm stamping this onto here if I find that I come a lot closer down to here then I can have a smaller gap so the gap between sentiment and the base I can have as the same gap between the sentiment and the top bit if that makes sense like I've got the same gap there top and bottom then I can do the same here if I don't manage to get the same spacing okay so there are several reasons why it was good not to give you a measurement for this I just make sure my card is straight can I bring this down a bit? Yep. But let's just make sure we are straight. Brilliant. Okay, now that that's done, I can judge how far I want this to be. Okay, looks like I'm going to finish up with about the same gap as I did on that one. In fact, that might even be wider, but it doesn't matter because I've got all of this space here. So what I'm going to do now, I am looking at that to decide exactly where I want this piece to go. 
I'm going to just tip it up for a moment. Yes, that's good. So I'm going to take my pencil and I'm just going to mark down so that I've got a very small gap up the top. I'm going to bring my trimmer in and just slice that off. So I'll tell you how much I'm cutting off. It looks like, well, it's 15 sixteenths by the looks of things, but that gives you an idea, just under an inch. Okay, so just make sure that's in there, pushed up against the top. So it's all nice and straight. Before you put anything inside your card, let me just show you the card, the, my first card. It was too busy apart from anything else. As you can see, I've used Petal Burst and it was up and down, up and down, all over to try and get um, the space there. Which I was quite happy with initially, but then the flower I used, I shouldn't have done that because the beauty of what we've done here is it's got small leaves actually built in and I finished up making these flower, these leaves are too big for that. That's, if I've got three of them, I should have just done it as one. Um, but as I say, idea's good. But what I did on the inside, the piece that I sliced off the top, I used it down here. In fact, thinking about it, I could actually do that now because I've done mine as a fussy cut one. So there's another idea for you if you want to do if you want to use your off cut on the inside, you can do. So now I've done that, I'm going to put that onto there. I've got my pencil mark that I can see. Right, so Tombow. I'm going to pop this on the front of my card because it is easier before I get those flowers on there. So again, I'll use Tombow. So there's that. Now with my flowers on here, I've got the dimensional in between those two, but I glued the rest of it down onto the card. And I just made sure that I didn't hit against the two. Let's see. So that one, in fact, that's almost the same. Oh no, that one turned around, didn't it? but I did slot the two of them into each other like that. Let's turn that one round a bit like that. That can come down like that. Yeah, I'll be happy with that. So, let's do this one first. to slot in. Yep, okay, that's good. There we go. I'm happy with that. So pop these bits on the inside.
Now when I pop this in on here, do I want to put that there with my flower on top of it? Looks quite nice actually, isn't it? I'm going to do that. So let me pop that on there first, just in case there's any coming off of the edge, then I can just trim that before I put this layer inside the card. Pencil mark there as well, can see. Mm, tiny little piece hanging off. Always cut from the back if you want to trim. Hardly noticeable, but right and. That's how I want mine to go. I'm just going to put some glue in the centre. That's it. Yes, much happier with that. There we go. And I think I'm just going to put a little bit of bling on there as well. I can just reach across to get some pearls or something. Should we have pearls or diamonds? Pearls to keep going with the white. Right, here we go. I know I don't have my paper piercer out today. This is why I'm trying to use tweezers. Let's try a bigger pair. better. I will do that to that one as well before I photograph it for my um, blog on Wednesday. So there we go. Now you can see whether you like to have the same colour um, or at least a colour or white as your top. Um, I'm not very happy with that inside at all but I'm definitely very happy with that. I might see if I can do something about correcting that. Um, as I say, there'll be photographs of this on my blog on Wednesday, uh, which is the same day that the uh, video will go live. So you could check it out and see whether I did actually change the inside of that one or not. Anyway, many thanks for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed today's project. If you have any questions, please leave them in the box below the video. If you like, um, would like to buy any of the products that I featured here, there'll be a link to my 24-7 online stamping up shop in the box below. Also in the box below, I will put a list of all the products that I've used and also all the measurements. If you've enjoyed my video and would like to be notified each time I upload a new one, um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And finally, um, to say that I do have a Facebook group for crafters to share their projects and I set it up because a um, lot of people show me their um, projects that they've made. Sometimes it's because of something they've seen 
um, that I've made. Sometimes it's nothing connected at all, um, but they just share with me, which I'm really very blessed for and I appreciate it. Um, but I just think it's a shame that other people don't get to see them because they are lovely. So if you would like to join my Facebook group, it's called Jambi Happy Crafting. I'd love to see you over there. Many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. Cheerio.